而家係進入財委會嘅特別。Members,、uh, this is the 19th session of the Special FC meeting, and the scheduled time is from 10:50 to、uh, 12:50. Let me welcome the、uh, Secretary for Food and Health, Dr. Ko Wing Man, and his team to answer members' questions in relation to health.、Uh, that is、uh, bracket H. I'll first give the floor to the secretary for a, a brief introductory speech. Members, I mean chairman, if you'd like to reserve more time for members' questions, I can、uh, skip my introduction uh, because um, the um, introduction is purely、um, information in nature. All right, very good. Then I open the floor to members for questions. Mr. Wong Kwok Heng, thank you, chairman. I have two questions for the secretary. First, according to apparent nine of、uh, the secretary's speaking note, Chinese medical hospital.、Uh, it is said that、uh, it will be、uh, left to the Chinese Medicine Development Committee. But then there is also the Chinese Medicine Practice Subcommittee and the Chinese Medicines Industry Subcommittee, and they will、uh, discuss、uh, the issue again. So I'd like to know、uh, which committee takes the lead, and how long is the discuss discussion going to take before、uh, the Chinese Medicine Hospital can be constructed? All right. How long、uh, will the discussion take, and what is the timetable? And now I turn to page three of the secretary's speaking note about an elderly、uh, voucher scheme, medical voucher scheme.、Uh, many elderly persons are asking、uh, whether the eligibility. Uh, the eligible age should be、uh, lowered to 65, so that they don't have to wait until 70. In particular, they want、uh, the vouchers to be used for dental services.、Uh, many、uh, elders have、uh, lost all their teeth before 70 years old. Secretary, you're also a doctor. I think uh, uh, we uh, should deal with a disease at an early stage, and you know.、Um, Treatment needs time, so、uh, can the eligible age be reduced to 65 for the health voucher schemes, so that、um, elders can benefit earlier? Secretary, first, the Chinese Medicine Development Committee has got two subcommittees. That's correct. Ah,、uh, the Chinese Medicine Practice Subcommittee. Has been discussing this issue. We have not、uh, waited for a particular committee to complete its work before we proceed. Last year, late last year, we set up the committee, and then in early this year, it was already agreed that the committee accord top priority to the construction of the first Chinese medicine hospital. In Hong Kong, even before、uh, other agenda items are completed, and they have already accepted the recommendation. And in this year's policy address,、uh, the CE said that a site has been reserved in Changquan for the construction of、uh, the first medicine hospital. So it's already decided that such a hospital be built. It was、uh, proposed by the Chinese Medicine Development Committee. However, there are many、um, other aspects in the development of Chinese medicine,、uh, and this includes the future operation of the hospital and also、um, a synergy and a collaboration between、uh, Chinese and、um, Western medicines in the future. And the、uh, voucher scheme. Well, there is no means test. For、uh, the voucher scheme, and secondly, you can see that we've been enhancing the scheme. At first,、uh, it、uh, was two hundred fifty, and was、uh, subsequently raised to five hundred, and now two thousand. And it is also a recurrent program. So we believe、uh, 
the priority is uh, to enhance uh, the value under the scheme so that eligible elders can fully utilize the resources to uh, purchase medical services that they need. Mr. James Till, I'd like to ask about uh, Professor Yu. In Hong Kong, we have got uh, 40 old um, uh, cardiologists with over um, 20 years of experience. Professor Yu uh, is among the top uh, most uh, experienced cardiologists in Hong Kong and has been uh, barred from uh, doing surgeries for more than a year. And then in a New Year reception, the secretary has asked uh, Professor Yu uh, has been banned from um, performing operations for more than a year. And then it was first promised that the um, investigation will be completed late last year. And is it fair? And Professor uh, Dr. Yu said that uh, it's hoped that uh, within six to eight weeks uh, there can be uh, the report from the expert panel uh, for final decision of the HA. Secretary, is it that we have many cardiologists in Hong Kong? In NTEs, uh, patients with serious heart problems, well, they need experienced cardiologists to do operations for them, and we're fewer now. If it is a minor issue, I don't think uh, there would be one. There would be so many people asking you this question, but this is a major issue. And secretary, you're also a doctor. Don't you think that uh, this involves uh, public interest and can uh, the matter drag on forever? And isn't it fair to uh, patients uh, with serious heart problems in NT East, secretary? I agree. There's such a rare uh, specialists are important resources of the community, and therefore we should allow the uh, relevant uh, expert to uh, continue to serve the public as soon as possible. This is our target. And secondly, in the process, we want to come to a conclusion as soon as possible. But on the other hand. We have to ensure procedural justice, and therefore, in the process, HA has uh, kept me abreast of the latest development, and I don't have the feeling that HA is uh, stalling. But, but uh, justice delayed is no justice; it's justice denied. I think, Mister, do you agree that if we want the matter to be fair and just, sometimes? Spending time is inevitable, and how do we strike a balance? I have to point out that the HA has commissioned an independent commission of inquiry to look into the matter. And Chairman, you understand that we cannot intervene administratively the work of the panel. Well, six experts uh, from the medical association involving overseas uh, experts as well have come up with a report within two weeks, I mean two months. Are your experts um, more elite and are you, do you have to look for so many uh, uh, experts or is it because uh, you have uh, to find out who is accountable? You have to publish the report sooner or later. Mr. Toh, that is certainly not uh, the matter. Now, if you refer to the report by the Medical Association, the HA is still trying to uh, uh, to uh, to get the report from the Medical Association uh, because uh, it was submitted by the association to uh, the uh, special committee. So uh, the HA has to find out how uh, the Medical Association uh, had uh, done that report. Has it gone through uh, procedural justice? We have to understand more. Secretary, I think it's difficult for us to concentrate on one single case. And uh, resources, why are we uh, one doctor short? I don't know. Uh, Mr. Lund, do you have anything to add? Yes. Uh, we also like to. Uh, Settle the matter as soon as possible. And as for cardiology, it's true that uh, resources are rare, but uh, we've been able to maintain normal level of services. Thank you.
Next, Mr. Michael Tian. Chairman, I hope you don't mind uh, because I uh, was late. Secretary, uh, do you mind uh, responding uh, my queries about the future of our public markets? Why are so many of our public markets without air conditioning? Because you need 85% of uh, the operators' uh, agreement. And for many of them, they have not seen any rental increase uh, since uh, uh, a long time ago. And that means uh, air con fees uh, might be um, equivalent to half of uh, the uh, of rent. So, what are the purpose purposes of our public markets? Do we want to uh, serve uh, the store operators or to enhance patronage and circulation? And why hasn't the government increased rents of our public markets for so long? Because you fear criticism. All right. The consultancy report will uh, tell the administration how to. Um, cut down on its losses and how our markets can perform better under the leadership of the government. Secretary, will you consider um, adopting the thinking of the nation uh, when it's deepening its reforms? Instead of the government running the markets, should we set up a statutory body independent of the market to manage public markets? You are losing $200 million per year. And uh, if you increase rents, uh, you will be criticized. If you don't, the standard of services are deteriorating and markets are so dirty. So why don't you spend $200 million uh, to find the uh, most outstanding persons? to manage your markets. You're worried that it may be a repetition of the link read, but you can put it in the relevant ordinance very clearly that the rentals must be, say, 20% lower than the market rate, so that it will not be another link read. And then, uh, because the rents are already fixed, then uh, it is not that the stores will go to the highest bids. Rather, they uh, can uh, use the business turnover of a particular store to decide whether its lease can be released. And if uh, it doesn't, then uh, he have to go to ensure that you have uh, the uh, best uh, mix of commodities and at com affordable prices. So it's like the link reads, but you don't have to ask the civil servants to run them. Uh, civil servants are not in the business sector. They don't know how to do business. So, Secretary, will you adopt an open mind as far as this direction is concerned if the consultant is willing to discuss with us? Secretary, it's up to you whether you want to reply to this question or not. I'd like to point out that we have commissioned a consultant uh, to assess our, uh, our public policy on public markets. Uh, the consultant will meet the relevant panel of this council soon and I um, appeal to Mr. Tian to put these proposals to the consultant. As far as the government is concerned, we have to uh, understand all the details and feasibility and will maintain an open mind. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you, Chairman. So uh, Mr. Michael Tian was only using his own time. It will not eat into his speaking time will not eat into our um, meeting time. Dr. Helena Wong, I'd like to ask about mental wellness. I'm pleased that there will be a review committee on um, mental wellness to be set up. Hong Kong is a very stressful place. Uh, we have heard of um, depressions and uh, anxiety neurosis, and uh, we have also seen uh, youths committing suicide. Just yesterday, as reported in the news, a 24-year-old young man who uh, was a young engineer uh, jumped to his height, jumped from height to end his life. So, I'd like to ask the secretary how you're going to promote mental wellness in Hong Kong. For those uh, serious cases uh, that require treatment, do you have sufficient uh, institutions to treat them? And for uh, early cases uh, with uh, the uh, signs and symptoms, um, with um, 
neurotic or problems, many of them are also women. What measures do you have for early detection and uh, diagnosis to see the people suffering from uh, neurotic uh, diseases so that before uh, they uh, they get worse, well, they don't need to be hospitalized. So early detection and diagnosis and also treatment other than uh, medication to assist them to uh, deal with their mental uh, health issues. Secretary, Mr. Chairman, for the review committee on mental health, it has been in operation for a period of time. Um, since its uh, inception to now, the review committee has been focusing on cases of serious uh, mental uh, diseases. Um, the review committee on mental health has been carrying out discussion, and in light of that, the policy address has already put in place certain initiatives. Say, for example, we are going to set aside more money uh, so that um, more um, patients uh, can make use of new uh, antipsychotics. Um, and then um, the HA has been emphasizing um, the case management uh, system. Currently, uh, it covers 15 districts in Hong Kong. And in this uh, financial year, the HA has planned to expand the scheme so that the case management system will cover all the 18 districts in Hong Kong. Dr. Wong also referred to another issue um, that is uh, for less serious cases of mental health. Yes, um, for each and every, uh, for some patients, now the symptoms may not be too serious, but I do agree that uh, with early uh, detection and early treatment, it can help to arrest the deterioration of the um, problem. But then uh, we have a huge workload. We certainly understand that within the HA, as far well as the uh, specialist outpatient clinics for mental health are concerned, we really have to uh, spend a lot of attention on such patients. So um, the review committee will soon start the discussion on this aspect. For the long time, we need to be assured of adequate manpower so as to deal with the huge workload. And uh, other than uh, doctors, uh, we may need uh, the help of family doctor. We expect a greater uh, role to be played by family doctors so as to deal with that many patients. Next, Dr. Kiki Kwok. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I would like to take an overall view of the expenditure on health care. And uh, in fact, um, between 1989 to 2014, I would like to point out that um, 2.9. Um, I think uh, the percentage has been dropped from uh, 2012 to 13. Now the population is aging. We have more demand for health services. But then for your health-related expenditure, uh, there has been a drop in the percentage. You say that there has been an increase in the subvention to the HA, but then this isn't enough. So for your health care policy, I think you need to set a threshold. I think you mustn't allow the uh, rate of increase to fall below 3.2%. Otherwise, you are not going to uh, facilitate an improvement. On the contrary, there will be a problem. For my uh, question, uh, 2147, um, you need to address the problem of an even distribution as well. For NT West cluster, uh, you look at the figures concerning the number of patients uh, who were admitted and died. And uh, I think uh, the figures are worse than that in Hong Kong Island. In other words, uh, in some clusters, the utilization rate is 47% more than the less um, uh, crowded clusters. Every day, we have got tens of thousands of patients who are suffering. Now, the administration is asking us to be patient and wait for the completion of the review. This is irresponsible. 
Well, I think、um, for women's health、uh, centers and elderly health centers, now it is a laughing stock because、um, most of the、um, Healthcare centers are part-time healthcare centers because, in fact, they are maternity and child health centers. And then, on a day or two,、uh, they change、uh, into a women's health center. So, I want to know whether the administration、uh, has got any uh, clear uh, guidelines so that、um, maybe、uh, we can make a, a drastic change within a year or two. Mr. Chairman, well, as far as、uh, public expenditure is concerned,、um, I think it's referring to the percentage of healthcare、uh, that are vis-a-vis、um, -vis the total GDP. I think seventeen、um, percent of the total government expenditure is spent on healthcare, and we have to look at the absolute figures. But、um, in terms of manpower and other resources, we've seen an increase. But we do agree that with the aging of the population, I think、um, uh, as a result of that,、uh, we are not able to catch up with the demand for more resources.、Um, as far as the government is concerned, we do have a lot of plans, and we want to deal with the.、Um, Increase in demand for public health, resulting in an aging population and a growth in population in the long term. Another question is about the distribution of resources. I want to point out that、uh, the review committee on HA has already started work since、uh, October last year, so it has been working for slightly more than four months' time. But in fact,、um, we are now、uh, embarking on a very、uh, important discussion. That is about the、uh, resource allocation among the clusters of the HA. We'd like to examine the model to be adopted. I think、um, probably、um, either we look at the workload or we look at the size of the population. When it comes to the allocation of resources,、um, on if we base it on population, it may appear to be fair. But then we have to deal with other issues. Say, for example, we have cross cluster patients. And then for advanced technologies like the、um, fourth tier or the tertiary、uh, services, some of them are sort of、uh, concentrated in certain hospitals, and we have to、uh, see how、um, that would impact upon the allocation of resources. If we can resolve this problem, I won't rule out the possibility that the HA may change its method of allocation of resources. Thank you. Next, Dr. Joseph Lee. A few questions. I would like to go to question zero nine three, and that's about、uh, nursing manpower. We have been told that last year, nine hundred and eighty nurses left. Among them,、um, about five hundred of them had less than five years' experience. In other words, half of them are young nurses. So my question is,、um, are you worried that there will be a succession problem? Because、uh, many young nurses have left, is it because they find it too、uh, t uh, too harsh? Because they're supposed to look after twelve、uh, patients instead of six,、um, and then、uh, answer number two 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 one, and that's about the screening for colorectal、um, cancer.、Um, you are going to spend.、Um, Four hundred million dollars. How many cases can you cover? And then thirdly, answer two one eight. You talk about the、um, assessment for elderly people. Thirty eight thousand being the figure. You haven't increased it. So would you consider providing more resources so as to enlarge the quota so that more? Elders can be given the assessment service, so three for the time being. Thank you, Dr. Lee. First of all,、uh, nursing manpower. As to how we can retain sufficient uh, um, healthcare professionals in the system, well, in the past few months, during which time we reviewed the HA. We went to seven clusters to hold、uh, 
um, large scale seminars to listen to the views of our HA staff. And in fact, um, a lot has been said about uh, the development of our healthcare uh, professionals, uh, their training, their wastage, etc. Uh, we believe that um, maybe we don't have to wait for the completion of the review of the HA by the committee before we start to do anything about it. Well, in fact, um, the um, CD of the HA has also listened to the views, and in fact, internally, the HA can immediately start to find ways to put in more efforts to step up the training and to find ways to retain the nursing staff. As to the second question, that's about the screening test for uh, colorectal uh, cancer. Uh, to be frank with you, if we have to cover all the citizens age 50 or above, in the context of the public health sector of Hong Kong, I don't think we can take it up on our own. But to me, I believe that if we do make a start, and it means that maybe one day, um, until we have got sufficient resources in the public health care center, and then we embark on it, then it would be too late, because um, it is uh, becoming a very uh, prevalent uh, matter, and we need to have early uh, detection, and therefore. Uh, with the CE's support, as he has mentioned it in the policy address. So for the first year or two, we would need to carry out some in-depth planning. And then, irrespective of the uh, tools to be employed and irrespective of the mechanism to be established, uh, like uh, how the samples are to be collected, and if the test result is positive, how we're going to follow this up. We need to um, determine the details. So at this stage, we're not able to tell you how many people can be covered under the colorectal uh, cancer screening program. Uh, what about the assessment for the elders? Um, maybe the Director of Health can answer this question. Well, in the 2014-15 uh, year, uh, we are going to have an additional team. In the following year, 15-16, we have another team of officers to deal with the assessment for the elders. We are going to carry this out at the elderly health centers. So uh, there will be 2,125 more assessments. Thank you. Next, um, Ms. Emily Lau, Deputy Chair. Thank you. I would like to look at the question of shortage of doctors. Not too long ago, the DP and the Liberal Party cooperated and we had certain recommendations. Albert Ho and Vincent Fang met with the Secretary. And in fact, come next week, we are going to visit the HA and then we will also meet with the Hong Kong U as well as the uh, Hong Kong Medical Association. It seems that we have to overcome a lot of obstacles. For both the grassroots as well as the middle class, we are frustrated. Uh, you need to wait a long time before you get to your turn at public hospitals. Like uh, for bone diseases, you may have to wait for two to three years' time before your first appointment. Now, we have been promised a manpower uh, the, uh, review, and then in a couple of years' time, more doctors will graduate. Uh, we need some short-term relief measures. Is it possible for you to convince the doctors? Now, in the past, during the colonial era and also uh, since the handover of Hong Kong um, to China, I don't know why we haven't uh, looked at this additional source of supply. We have got um, Hong Kong citizens uh, studying overseas, and they can speak Cantonese. Uh, why can't you attract them to come back to Hong Kong to practice? Uh, why don't? You, why are you making them to sit the examinations? Ms. Lang has already pointed out that for a past period of time. Yes, I know it is a headache. Uh, you do need to support your chin with your hand. It's a uh, the secretary is not uh, feeling well today. Uh, it's a matter of um, the distance between myself and the mic. Um, we do uh, liaise closely with the profession as well as the two universities. We have already come to a consensus. We very much hope that as a result of the licensing 
uh, essentiating uh, uh, examination, we can have more overseas medical graduates coming to Hong Kong to practice. The Hong Kong Medical Council has already agreed, and that is um, in this year. Starting from this year, there will be two exams per year instead of one, and we're also finding ways to address the following issue: that is, having passed the exam, maybe the candidates can have a shorter um, internship. And the format of the examination we are discussing with the two medical schools, uh, we've considered setting up a, finan a resource centres, so that. For overseas medical graduates who are not familiar with our um, examination setting and clinical setting can then um, uh, undertake practicum so that uh, they will be more familiar with our format so that they will not fail because of that. Do you know how many doctors are we short? And uh, for those who have applied to come to Hong Kong to practice in recent years, do you think that most of them uh, should be qualified to serve in our public hospitals? How many doctors are we short? According to HA, we have about 300 vacancies. 300. How many applications have we received and how many have been approved? According to our uh, previous uh, years of experience, under another scheme, uh, that is uh, the restricted licensing scheme, about a dozen or so were successful. But how many re applications? Close to 100, uh, less than 100 applications. So only a dozen or so out of 100 applications could succeed. Is there a problem? Well, you put that question this way, I have uh, to arrange uh, my thoughts. Well, uh, please don't kneel on your um, hand. Uh, perhaps it will help him to think. I think he has done his best. Mr. Poon Siu Peng. Thank you. Uh, reply number 169. Uh, addition of beds. In 2014-15, the HA will add 205 beds, 85 for acute general and uh, 50 for uh, infirmary or convalescent. Now, convalescent beds, you've only got 20 uh, in the Kowloon West Cluster and none in other clusters. So what are the standards uh, for uh, this arrangement? And uh, acute beds. In Kowloon uh, East, there are only four in NCH and Zhongguano hospitals, and other clusters uh, 24 to 62. I'd like to ask why Kowloon East can have only four additional beds. Do we have to wait until um, uh, usage is uh, redeveloped in 2020 before we can see more bets? Another question. It relates to reply number 198, medical health vouchers. Now, there are third. 33,000, uh, 337,000 uh, elders registered under your scheme, and uh, they have also uh, got them vouchers um, disqualified. Now, I want uh, more elders to enjoy the scheme. So, if uh, you, if they just uh, lose the, the, the if the scheme is no longer valid, then it's a waste. Can you publicize the vouchers um, so that the uh, that we can have less unspent vouchers? Thank you. Uh, uh, eligible elders that have accumulated unspent vouchers for use. Now, first, uh, there is no means test under the scheme, and some elders may have sufficient resources and they don't feel the need to use the vouchers perhaps and as regards publicity of course we can enhance publicity 
to ensure that everyone is aware of the scheme, so that those who need uh, to use the vouchers uh, will be informed. And may I ask the HA uh, to explain uh, details about convalescent or rehabilitation beds? Thank you. Every year, we have uh, resources from the government for uh, opening new beds. Now, it's not that uh, these are only the places uh, that require new beds. We have to consider the facilities as well as manpower. In 2013-14, we were given $155 million to open 120 acute beds, acute general beds, and $95 million to add 130 beds. So it depends on the demand every year and whether we have the facilities available in our new hospitals or in uh, clusters such as NT West where uh, the demand is uh, more, uh, we had resources to open new beds. So it all depends on the facilities and also the need of the particular district. So every year we have different allocation um, on a demand basis. And in uh, hospitals to be redeveloped, there will be more beds, so this will uh, uh, fill up the gap. Ms. Alice Mack. A question 244. The reply uh, made no mention of uh, the third part of my question, whether uh, there will be more dental clinics in Hong Kong. And I'm referring to uh, part three of the secretary's reply. Now, our dental services cannot cater for elders. Well, even uh, for elders, we are not providing comprehensive services. For uh, CSSA recipients that are over 65 years old, yes, they can have access to a number of uh, services. But uh, whether we talk about the um, um, elderly health care voucher scheme or other schemes, we cannot benefit the elders. And uh, why, why, and why do you single out elders only? You talk about acute dental services at hospitals. We know that there is only tooth extraction and uh, analgesic. Is that enough? Does that mean that young people don't need to uh, take care of their teeth? So will you provide more resources to train more dentists in Hong Kong? In, in the long term, we should have more publicly funded dental services. And then question 162. I will have a written uh, follow-up question on uh, provision of information, uh, such as the expenditure on uh, superintendents and also expenses on frontline uh, medical uh, personnel and uh, expenses on medication or drug. About uh, 10 percent on this, but in other countries, uh, the percentage is uh, 13 to 15 percent of the overall expenditure. They devote that to drugs. Every year, the HA will say that uh, they are very satisfied and that they have. Uh, it's true that we have uh, maintained this percentage of expenses on drugs. Now we want that percentage to be increased, and also uh, the uh, drug formulary and also uh, drugs. Uh, not within the safety net. Will you consider a double track approach so that I, it's just like the WITSS? Can we allow uh, individuals to apply independent of their families? We don't our patients uh, to worry uh, for their finances when they are sick. I really have to reiterate that the administration has no intention to provide a full range of dental services in the public sector. The resources involved are mammoth and then in many places of the world, uh, this is also not done. So we must channel our limited resources uh, to areas most in need. Prevention is very important, so 
we focus on uh, dental health for children. Now, if uh, there is proper uh, dental care and if uh, people know how to take care of their oral health, uh, there is no need for dental treatment in the future. Now, our resources are also spent on elders. We focus on the elders in need so that they can have access to dental services they need. And if there is time left, can I ask Dr. Zhou or from HA to talk about the drug infirmary? Yes, we can hardly compare with other uh, jurisdictions because the cost structure is very different in Hong Kong. We have uh, seen a double-digit increase in uh, drugs in the past few years. And as for the Samaritan Fund, the system is designed according to other similar safety nets in Hong Kong. And we review it year on year, and every year there are different uh, types of concessions and uh, lowering of threshold. We'll keep reviewing uh, the mechanism. Mr. Albert Chen, thank you. Uh, question 021, uh, the number of patients uh, in our public hospitals and also uh, support from the government. Uh, it's disappointing that we don't see the um, a breakdown of different hospitals. But if you look at the number of discharges and deaths, uh, Tun Moon uh, has the highest number. And then uh, QEH also uh, 70,000 odd. Tun Moon um, has its intrinsic deficiencies. When it was built because of financial pressure on the government, uh, it was not properly designed and not well constructed. And uh, the hospital is suffering extreme pressure because of demand for medical services. Many doctors are not willing to serve in TMH because of uh, the stressful environment there. I've asked the administration a number of times when it comes to allocation of resources and improvement to TMH, what measures are there? The government has uh, provided money to the HA for upgrading and maintenance of hospitals. And uh, HA has also enhanced its financial support. So uh, because of the uh, very unique circumstances of Tumon Hospital, can the secretary tell us uh, what measures do you have? Because it has the num highest number of uh, discharges and deaths. I don't know whether there are particular high uh, death rate there, but can you tell us uh, whether there can be improvement uh, to uh, the services? offered at Tumun Moon Hospital, Secretary. Tumun Moon is an important uh, acute and general hospital, hospital in anti-West. And the population increase is also very substantial in that area. I visited Tumun Moon Hospital many times to uh, try to identify areas of improvement uh, for uh, the um, for surgical unit. For instance, we know that they are short of operation theaters. So HA has started a feasibility study to uh, build a complex uh, there uh, for uh, the surgical discipline. And uh, the catchment area of Tumun area is Yunnong and Tin Shui Wai, where population is also rising. So we have started the plan to build a general hospital in Tin Shui Wai. In the long term, it's been pointed out uh, by the consultant that there is a problem of resource allocation uh, among our clusters. And the string committee of HA is studying this. In fact, uh, we are consulting all colleagues in different clusters to see uh, whether uh, resources uh, should be allocated on a population basis. There are both uh, pros and cons for this idea. For those who have reservations, they believe that if you consider the size of population, you have uh, to understand uh, the situation where 
patients from other districts come for treatment to a particular clusters, and then in some clusters they may not have all the necessary facilities. However, if we can tackle this problem, these problems, the committee will consider whether in future financing will be based on the population. And what about? Can you give us a comparison of the overall expenditure for these hospitals? Sure. Yes, Mr. Wu Chiwai. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I may follow up on my own question, uh, 189, and just about um, the hospital, and then there's the Lady of Merino Hospital. So I want to know when you can complete um, the review of that hospital. I asked the question, but it seems that you haven't answered. Are you going to go ahead with that? Um, that's the first question. Second question is that in Wong Tai Sin, I think um, for Wong Tai Sin, uh, for the residents, if they want to go to a hospital in their own district, I think um, they have to go quite uh, far away, say, for example, QEH. So the performance pledge in terms of time cannot be met. It is said that there will be a hospital to be built in uh, Kai Tech, but then that's for the longer term. So for Our Lady of Mirror Hospital, I think it's quite centrally located, and um, it, it has a lot of uh, uh, facilities. But of course, uh, it is not a fully uh, general uh, hospital in terms of the functions. But then, if you go to a hospital, you have to wait for the triage. Uh, for Our Lady of Merino Hospital, I just wonder whether it can act as an interim uh, hospital um, so as to sort of um, um, channel the patients uh, so that we can see the a hospital playing a more important role. Of course, we have been told today for Wong Tai Sin District, there will be a private public private partnership program. Uh, this is good, but then we don't get any service uh, after midnight. And uh, so for our district, we hope that Our Lady of Mineral Hospital can um, be uh, equipped with 24-hour service, or something like a 24-hour A&E department, so they can also act as an interim sort of a station, so that uh, residents can first go to this hospital and then go to another hospital uh, that can suit the uh, needs of the patient. Uh, Secretary. I will try to answer the question, and then HA will answer the specific issues. Uh, generally speaking, for Our Lady of Merino Hospital, as Mr. Wu has noted, um, in the case of Wong Tai Sin and the neighboring districts, we are aware of the demand for health services, and therefore, in Kai Tech, we are going to build a relatively larger uh, hospital, uh, which is a new acute general hospital. And for Our Lady of Merino Hospital, we have to consider the uh, redevelopment in the long term. And of course, it has to tie in with the um, development of healthcare services in Kowloon Central Cluster. Uh, we have to look at that first before we can tell what the positioning of that of Our Lady of Merino Hospital is going to be like. For Our Lady of Merino Hospital, uh, yes, uh, it occupies a very good location and it can help part of the problems faced by the residents. But then, uh, the, there is a question of such constraint. And um, I'm afraid that uh, it, it is not quite likely to become a general acute hospital. So to me, I think for OLMH, other than uh, rehab uh, services, it can also be turned into a daycare center. Probably it can play a larger role in terms of that. Uh, for the details, I would like to defer to the HA. Um, Mr. Uh, Dr. Lang. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For Kowloon Central and Kowloon East, for both clusters, we are now planning for the clinical services. Uh, we have to look at the cluster as a whole. For acute services, uh, we have to look at the facilities that can support the service. Of course, residents would like to have 24-hour A&E department. They would like to be seen by doctors on the spot. But then for uh, acute services, we need to have the support services in terms of 
of um, intensive care as well as uh, other uh, services. Uh, if we uh, have to rely on transfer, it may cause unnecessary delays. Uh, we understand the views of Wang Taishin residents as well as residents in current central and current east. As the secretary has said, the future new hospital in Kai Tak will assist with the solution of the problem. Next, Albert Ho. My question is to do with psychiatric uh, patients and their uh, rehabilitation. First question is about psychosis. It was started in the year 2001. Um, now, it appears to me that uh, we have an increasing number of young people suffering from uh, psychosis or other mental problems. Now. The administration, or rather the secretary, has said that it is important of early assessment and follow up. For the first three years, uh, you will have more intensive care. So please elaborate on the details of the uh, first three years treatment. And then generally speaking, for such mental patients, I want to know about the frequency of follow up consultation. Certainly. On the one hand, the community is concerned about their conditions. On the other hand, we are worried. We don't know whether such patients will cause a nuisance to neighbors and whether they are violence prone so that they are not suitable for treatment in community. Yes, we are sort of uh, having contradictory views. Uh, we are concerned about the community um, orders. Uh, if we allow somebody to go back to the community, we would like to have an order to mandate uh, um, taking uh, medicine and going back uh, for follow-up uh, consultation. Mr. Chairman, uh, for the scheme concerning uh, or rather the program on psychosis, uh, this is exactly because uh, for uh, serious cases, the onset of the disease uh, took place at an early stage of education or work life. So a uh, delay in treatment or discouragement of uh, treatment or family members failing to note that it's a matter of psych uh, of um, mental illness um, that would um, delay the treatment and would worsen the case. That's why we have this uh, program called EASY, so that um, in the community more people can look out for the early signs of mental problems so that the patients can be referred to the EASY assessment and detection of young people with early psychosis or a program. Now, if you detect it too late, and the patients might have undergone certain events uh, so that uh, they will be mandated that they were put under mandatory inpatient uh, treatment, and then they will be labeled, and there will be a stigma, uh, and then the rehabilitation process will take longer time. For the uh, details, I would like to defer to the HA. HA, yes, uh, for the uh, uh, psychosis program, it has been launched for a number of years, and in fact, uh, the scope has been expanded. In the past, we targeted at young people, and now we have already extended it to other age bands. Uh, what we want to do is that by having early assessment and treatment, uh, we can have uh, uh, better arrangements for transfer. So for the first three years of onset of the illness, there will be a case manager, and then uh, he will look at the uh, support to be rented by the society, by the school, and by the family. And then uh, for uh, follow-up consultation, it depends on the conditions of the case. We don't have a hard and fast rule, but then uh, certainly the follow-up sessions will be more frequent during the early stage. And then through education, we hope that the public can understand that mental patients won't create a risk to the community. We should be as tolerant as possible to assist with the rehabilitation and recovery. What about community treatment order? Uh, the review committee on mental health later on will look at this issue. Next, Mr. Chen King Po. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Please uh, go to answer 015. The insurance industry is concerned about uh, two issues. For the HPS, we hope that the uh, current um, uh, market uh, can be maintained so that the products can still be sort of uh, kept. Now, my question is about the following. 
now. It is said that uh, the future um, payment for premium will only be 9% more than the existing rates. It is unacceptable uh, to the industry. Uh, we have been told that for the standard plan um, and the relevant figures, this has been provided by the consultants for illustrative purpose and the actual premiums will be set by individual insurers. I hope that this point will also be added uh, to the future consultation document. Um, and then I go to uh, reply 016, and that's about the increase in the number of hospital beds in private hospitals. In your answer, you have told us what you're going to do. Now, my question is, I want to know whether you have set aside resources to deal with such a complex issue. Because by increasing the number of hospital beds in private hospitals, um, we're talking about new hospitals, and we're talking about a claim on land resources. Land is scarce in Hong Kong. You need to uh, liaise with the government to coordinate with the land supply. Um, expansion of hospitals would also be needed, and we need more manpower in terms of doctors and nurses. So are you going to give more resources so as to resolve the long-term problem? That is how, in the long term, we can have more hospital beds in private hospitals? I'll try to answer this question. For the first point, I think there's more a recommendation. For the second point, there's about the private hospital beds. Uh, we've set aside two sites for private hospitals. Only one was successfully granted. Uh, but of course, we've also noted that according to the industry, uh, for hospital uh, beds in the private sector, there is a shortage. So other than granting one site for a new hospital, um, there will be 500 more hospital beds in the private sector. In addition to that, I understand that there are also other new initiatives to build new private hospitals. We are now liaising with such um, operators. Um, our inclination is that we would like to facilitate Facilitate um, the construction of non-profit making private hospitals. We'll try to see how we can help them. In terms of the voluntary HPS, if it eventually goes ahead, we will see how we can arrange a loan for the non-profit making bodies to build private hospitals. But of course, uh, it is only when the HPS is launched can we do that. In terms of manpower, we do have a, a review committee to look at the manpower. And in fact, um, within this year, at least in terms of uh, healthcare professionals and doctors, we'll come up with some initial recommendations. For the longer term planning, we'll take into account all the factors, say for example, demand uh, in uh, by the public sector as well as the private sector, and of course we'll consider the scenario uh, after the HPS can be successful or has been successfully launched. Now my question is whether we have HPS or not. There's still an acute shortage of hospital beds in the private sector. We must increase the number of private hospital beds. Next, Miss Chen Yun Han. Oh, she has. Um, Left and in this case, we have a second round of questions. Dr. Helena Wong, three minutes. Thank you. Just now, I asked a question about mental health. I hope the administration will set aside resources for the following. That is for less serious cases, so that we can do more by way of prevention. Next, I want to turn to the question of uh, beauty services. At a panel meeting, I already mentioned this point, and a motion has already been carried. That is, we hope that the administration will regulate the beauty services industry so that their operation will be safe, and they should be uh, working towards professional development. But then in the secretary's uh, speech today, uh, not much uh, has been set aside for this aspect. Please report to us about the progress. The beauty services industry would very much like to be regulated, and they also hope that there will be professional development so that um, their uh, um, um, 
operators and their uh, workers uh, can become more specialized and that can safeguard public health. So can you elaborate on your plans and how you're going to consult the industry and the different stakeholders? Uh, Secretary, three points here. First of all, for the first two points, they are about safety. Uh, for the FHB, we are concerned about the beauty services industry in terms of their procedures. We want to focus on those procedures that may have a health risk on the uh, clients or customers. As you know that there was already a review committee to um, differentiate between the beauty services as well as um, other procedures that can only be carried out by uh, the medical doctors. So uh, we have in mind the um, uh, safety of the customer. Secondly, and uh, it's also about the use of medical appliances and equipment. We have indicated to the relevant panel that we've got the plan to uh, set up a regulatory regime so that uh, medical appliances and equipment now, uh, including those uh, for beauty services, should be regulated. We will report to the panel in due course and we will uh, communicate with the industry again so as to strike a balance. On the one hand, the industry should be allowed to use uh, some equipment, some medical equipment, so long as they have undergone training. And for high-risk equipment, it should only be managed by uh, qualified professionals to ensure safety. And thirdly, we've also discussed uh, with training organizations. so that we can cooperate with them to offer training for the beauty services industry. Uh, once we have identified procedures uh, that can be carried out uh, by non-medical uh, personnel, then um, members from the uh, beauty services industry have to undergo training first before they can use them. Dr. Kwakaki, second round. Am I coming through? Yes. I'd like to ask a question about waiting time in hospitals in particular. In many hospitals, uh, in NTWS in particular, uh, the uh, waiting time is uh, largely uh, due to a lack of anesthetists. anesthetists. Very often there are sufficient surgeons, but we don't have enough uh, anesthetists and also um, operating theaters. In the past, uh, maybe uh, five operations could be done on a, in a day, but because of more uh, non-invasive um, operations, uh, six or more can be done. So. I will not refer to uh, the administration's vague replies, but in uh, women's uh, health clinics, now there are many uh, low-income women who are not eligible uh, for CSA or health vouchers. When we talk about a pap smear or a test uh, for breast cancer, they are totally ignored by the administration. I'd like to know the reason why. Uh, first, uh, the manpower for uh, anesthetics. We understand that HA is uh, adopting various measures to relieve uh, this problem, including uh, using uh, limited uh, licensing uh, doctors. In our string committee to review uh, the strategic review of the HA, we believe we need uh, more comprehensive solution. Now, uh, at present, we rely on people to uh, come forward to uh, apply to join. Perhaps the uh, HA's headquarters should enhance 
their power and ability to coordinate the uh, manpower distribution among various specialties uh, in uh, the first uh, round of allocation of new doctors to different uh, specialties and also the redeployment due to surface needs. This will in the long term help to address manpower uh, issues and uh, to tackle the uh, manpower shortage in uh, some specialties. I don't know whether HA has anything to add. And I also hope uh, the uh, Department of Health can supplement. Yes, for uh, women health centers, we have three. And in 10 uh, MCHCs, uh, we have sessions uh, for um, mental or uh, for women's uh, well being. Uh, we offer uh, pap smear tests and uh, breast uh, cancer screening. As regards waiting time, I think uh, we can cope. For the time being, we've also subsidized uh, organizations uh, such as the Hong Kong Family Planning Association uh, to uh, carry out uh, examinations such as pap smear tests to ensure the health of women. So why don't you have uh, 18 in uh, such centers in OIT districts, why just three? Well, yes, three centers, but we have our MCHCs uh, providing such information, such services, because MCHCs are also providing a prenatal ex uh, examination and also uh, children's uh, assessment uh, from zero to five years. Uh, I think uh, our services are able to cope with demand for the time being. Question or reply 87. Uh, the uh, pilot scheme uh, for elderly, according to the administration, uh, $12 million have been reserved, hoping to uh, serve 10,000 elders. However, only 260 elders benefited from uh, this $23 million. So, have you got it wrong? You still have one and a half years to go. Uh, let, let me do some calculation. There are 9,000 odd uh, places under the scheme not yet taken up, so uh, the money uh, will not be uh, fully spent, so it would be a, a waste. And I also have a question on 224 um, varicella vaccination. I know that uh, the uh, MCHCs uh, will uh, over the service in 2014. Now this is already April. When can the service start? Uh, they expect that uh, by December this year, 58,000 babies uh, would have been vaccinated. But uh, there are rumors that there aren't enough uh, three-in-one vaccines uh, for this. So how can you ensure that you have sufficient vaccines uh, to cover all the babies as planned? Yes, I'll first uh, answer the first question and the Department of Health will supplement. Now, for all pilot schemes, when they are first launched, uh, I think uh, the number of uh, beneficiaries will gradually build up. And of course, we we'll have to see whether there are other reasons or, or areas of improvement so that the pilot program can progress more smoothly and that more elders can uh, benefit under the scheme. Uh, director, uh, to supplement and also to answer the second question. Yes, the elderly health assessment pilot scheme Prior to uh, the launch of the scheme, uh, we discussed with many uh, service providers for the first half year, we uh, decided to focus on singleton elderly or elders uh, that have never uh, received such services. Starting from the beginning of this year, we have enhanced publicity together with NGOs and elderly centers of the community. So um, this is a phased approach. We hope that we'll be able uh, to uh, cover the um, expected number of elders during the program. As for uh, the uh, shortage of uh, varicella vaccine, it's true that 
uh, all over the world, uh, this is a bit um, inadequate. Uh, the manufacturers have produced less, and Hong Kong is not alone in this problem. We have approached manufacturers to ensure that we have uh, sufficient and steady supply before we start the scheme. Our intention is to start it within 2014. But when? Well, we don't have the date yet because we have uh, to discuss with the suppliers to see when uh, there will be sufficient and uh, steady supply. Ms. Emily Lau. I'd like to uh, follow up with uh, my question of insufficient doctors. And uh, next uh, week, we are going to meet your new chairman uh, of the HA and also uh, meet Dr. Leung next week. We know that in public hospitals, there are over 300 vacancies of doctors. And last year, there was 100 applications, but only a dozen or so uh, applications were approved. You are on the HA. We want to have a quick solution for this big problem. We don't want uh, patients to wait for two years before they can get the first appointment uh, with an orthopedic surgeon in PMH. How can you ensure that people who are qualified can come to work in Hong Kong sooner? Now, if uh, your uh, requirements are not so harsh, perhaps uh, you can expect more than 100 applications. Is that right, Dr. Lam? Yes, we are still a short of manpower. And uh, as said by the sector, we have to wait for a few years before we have new medical graduates. Of course, uh, uh, the uh, limited registration scheme is not very successful. Uh, the Medical Council only approved 19 cases. We have uh, 10 um, non-local uh, such doctors working in Hong Kong, but they are useful. So we have to retain doctors. We've got um, measures hoping to lower the wastage rate. My question for the Dr. Leung is how uh, we can attract overseas doctors to come to work to Hong Kong. Do you think the Medical Council or the Medical School of Hong Kong U um, are trying to obstruct the process? Uh, what can you do? Is there any, um, are there any obstacles or resistance? Well, uh, we won't uh, call it uh, resistance, or they have their own thinking. We will continue to recruit uh, doctors with limited registration to practice in Hong Kong. What more can you do so that there can be more doctors in public hospitals to help the public? The secretary would like to say something. Replying to uh, Mr. Emily Lau's Emily Lung's question, we're discussing with universities now. There are two more examinations in a year, but uh, we, there are only a limited number of doctors that can sit in each examination because uh, there is the practical examination uh, where the candidates have to meet the uh, patients. However, uh, for medical students, uh, the format of examination has changed. That they may use uh, tele interviews, so on and so forth. So we're discussing with Hong universities if they allow the same uh, for overseas uh, candidates. Then I will think it will be very useful. Madam Chairman, your hand. First round. Chairman. I am a bit angry uh, when I um, followed the meeting, so I went to check some statistics. Chairman, we have an aging population. Uh, most of the beds in public hospitals are taken up by elders. And we'd like to know the number of patients that are over 65 years old, and I've never got an answer. Theoretically, you should tell me uh, the number of um, patients that are 65 years old admitted to public hospitals. Yes, um, uh, our medical and health bill is rising. And uh, I think the average is about 5% uh, or so. That is uh, the um, spending on medical and health against uh, government total expenditure. But I think there is a lot more the secretary can do. For instance, uh, 
colorectal cancer. Chairman, you know, I uh, once suffered from cancer, and I think prevention uh, should help. So we have an aging population, and food is unsafe, leading to many more cancer cases, all because of food. So the Secretary of the Administration uh, gives me the impression that it's just tinkering with the system. They're not uh, willing to face up to the problem that our population is aging and uh, we have more cancer and column rectal cancer is number two among the killers list. Uh, now, you were not the secretary yet, but you told me that uh, it's uh, expected that colorectal cancer will uh, be the number one killer in Hong Kong, but now it's number two. So you must deal with the problem of food safety. Food is very important. I don't think your attitude is right. My question is, in the light of this scenario, how are you going to resolve this problem brought about by an aging population? There are more and more patients uh, needing uh, admission to hospitals. And what about primary care? Uh, Secretary, a few members have talked about the screening program for colorectal cancer. It is said that it is expensive. I know something about it. Of course, you can be admitted to hospital and um, then uh, uh, you will be ex expensive, but you can also have the fecal occult blood test that will be um, cheaper. So are you going to do that? Uh, Secretary, it seems that you are always hiding uh, in the office and you only come out when there is a uh, when there's a problem. I don't think this is the right approach, Secretary. Um, you said you are infuriated. I'm also uh, very passionate about the job. Now, two figures here. You refer to the case of colorectal cancer. Now, just now, I wasn't referring to the um, dollar sign. I was saying that if we have to cover all those who are aged 50 or above, and I'm advocating this screening program, uh, Mr. Chairman, please give me adequate time, please. We need to do it at two levels. First of all, we have to rely on the fecal occult blood test, and then we have to use the endoscopic uh, uh, screening. Now, if we want to cover all the citizens age 50 or above, it will require lots of resources, but I'm not really about the dollar sign. You don't really have the manpower to cover all the uh, tasks. Now, had I been like uh, what Ms. Chen has said, that is, I'm only uh, interested in doing the uh, uh, remedial work, uh, that's not quite true. We just don't have the main power to roll out such an extensive program. Now, still, I have to make a very difficult choice. Uh, we have to make the first step. When we carry out the early stage of the program, we have to spend a lot of time on the planning, and then perhaps we we'll have to confine it to a particular age group. I know it is very important, but I'm still willing to make the first step. Had I tried to wait for all the resources to be in place, then we can never see any commencement of the program. Mr. Chairman, I haven't finished, Mr. Chairman. Now, for the long term, within the public health sector, the capacity is inadequate. For the past 10 years or so, we haven't built a new hospital. It was only last year that we um, completed the construction of the North Lantau Hospital. The last hospital to be completed was already uh, Chang Kwan O. Now, every time I visit the hospital, I can see for myself that we have got many elderly people lying in the hospital beds. They are all in the 80s. So for the long term, we need to do something uh, which is uh, requiring more efforts, and we need to build hospitals, and we have a lot of uh, difficulties. And what about the long-term impact? I've yet to come up with a precise figure, but I've already taken a first step, and we've already come up with a blueprint, and I've already uh, shown it to the health services panel. For the long term, we have to put in more efforts, hard efforts, to redevelop hospitals and to expand hospitals. Um, I want to raise my hand again. I respect the secretary. Uh, follow this up later on. You said that you are not interested in remedial work only, but objectively, this is the impression that you give us. Next, Mr. Paul Chair. Mr. Chairman, 
reply to 50. That's about the healthcare vouchers. Uh, yes, we've seen improvements and it's quite satisfactory. And for this year's uh, budget, I understand that the value has been increased to $2,000. It is good. Now, for the uh, healthcare voucher scheme, it covers um, chiropractors as well. But then for Kowloon East and Wong Tai Sin, I don't think you can really. Um, get to see chiropractors because they haven't got venues to practice. And in the public health care sector, I don't think we have this service. Now, according to some U.S. surveys, chiropractors um, are very popular uh, with the uh, patients. And then another question is about uh, smoking cessation uh, programs. Uh, Port Oil Hospital, Tongwa Group of Hospitals do provide this service. My question is, I want to know about the success rates and I want to know about the expenditure involved. So I want to know whether it is value for money and is there a need to review it. And thirdly, Tobacco Control Office, I want to know about the manpower um, projected. Three questions. First of all, chiropractor's service. I think for each and every place, we have got our own characteristics when it comes to um, the uh, health uh, sector. We've got different uh, cultures. We've got different uh, characteristics. We are well positioned in that we have got traditional Chinese medicine. So to me, I think uh, when there are so many uh, alternative medicines available, um, I think we must prioritize the various uh, disciplines. And to me, I would say that the priority should be given to the question of developing Chinese medicine for other alternative medicines, uh, or they are called complementary medicines in overseas countries. I think it's a matter of allowing it time to develop and then we let the community to know them better and then um, with more practitioners coming back from overseas studies, then the administration will consider whether we need to develop such uh, medicines as well. Uh, the D of J, uh, D of H can also consider the other questions. Uh, yes, the D of H and the HA have run a number of clinics to help with the cessation of smoking. Tonga Group of Hospitals, Port Oil Hospitals, and Lok Sin Tong also run such uh, clinics. Uh, for the success rate, it is about 30% or so. I think this is in line with the international um, uh, performance. Uh, for this year, we haven't added. Um, um, the level of man, uh, we haven't increased the level of manpower, um, but uh, we have got some slight increases for the resources. What about the tobacco control office? How do you rate their performance? Well, we have some uh, services at the famous clinics, and the success rate is also around about thirty percent. Next, Mr. James Tan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, other than being a patient, I don't think I know much about uh, health care. But then last time we compiled a report together with the Democratic Party, and as a result, I've learned more about health care. And from the figures, we can see for ourselves that we have got an aging population. And with an aging population, it means that we need more hospitals, we have to build more hospitals, we have to recruit more doctors. Hospital construction, it means that we need money. We need resources from the government. That's on about the hardware. For software, I think in Hong Kong we have a very acute shortage of uh, doctors, and in public hospitals, many doctors have to work over ten hours, and we have to wait many months or years before we get to see a specialist. In our report, we have also noted that. For the public health care sector, for the hospital authority, I don't know why the hospital authority does not have the power to 
recruit their own doctors from overseas countries. How come that you must get the approval of the medical council? You are the hospital authority. You lack doctors. I don't think you will uh, recruit poor quality doctors, and they, as a result of their poor quality, patients will be at stake. I don't think you will recruit that caliber of uh, doctors. No. The majority of the members of the medical council are doctors. There are very few laymen on the uh, medical council. Uh, of course, people are worried that there will be many doctors from overseas countries uh, fighting for jobs with the local doctors. Now, among the um, items, um, I mean, among the various uh, registration criteria uh, imposed by the Hong Kong Medical Council, it is said that fluency of Cantonese is important, is a mandatory requirement. But do we need uh, that uh, requirement? Because for experts from overseas, um, they do need to speak Cantonese, and they do need to have to be able to speak Cantonese before they can uh, make a diagnosis out of the say the X-ray uh, diagrams. So. Uh, I want to know whether we can have law, more lay members on the Hong Kong Medical Council and whether you really have to speak Cantonese fluently before you can practice medicine in Hong Kong. First of all, uh, doctor shortage. We are aware of the problem. For the past few years, we have already increased the number of medical undergraduates. So come the year 2018-19, there will be 100 more uh, medical graduates per year. Uh, in the interim, um, what we have to do is as follows. The HA will resort to different ways to recruit and retain uh, doctors. And then for overseas uh, graduates, uh, we want to improve our licensing examination for the registration of medical doctors. Mr. Tian would like to know whether we have to go through the medical council. Legally, uh, statutory uh, uh, speaking, yeah, it is really the case. And then for non-local doctors, um, their eligibility is being provided for in the law. So unless we change the law, we cannot do otherwise. And then for the third question, I think different specialties would have different uh, considerations. So maybe the HA can answer this question. The, the issue of language. Well, the language requirement is not a must. But then as far as our operations concerned, doctors the front line. Uh, it will be best if they can speak fluent Cantonese so as to communicate with the patients. For those in the uh, departments of um, uh, radiology, etc., they do need to come into contact with patients, so that would not be a requirement. Dr. Uh, Mr. Albert Ho, we have a lot of non invasive surgeries. It's good for the patients um, that can facilitate faster recovery. But then, When compared with conventional invasive surgeries, it will take more time. In fact, uh, the time needed will be uh, doubled or even uh, a few times more. So with more and more non-invasive surgeries, I want to know whether the HA is aware of the increase in the time needed at operating theatres. Would that result in longer waiting time? The secretary, during a conversation with me, has told me that there will be a plan to have more operating theatres. Like in the case of Tun Moon Hospital, it is planned that there will be a surgical block um, to accommodate that. So, um, but in fact, in the replies here, yeah, you haven't mentioned this point. So, can you comment on this, secretary? for non-invasive surgeries as to whether it would really increase the time needed. It all depends on the nature of the surgery, the type of the surgery, and also the um, experience of the doctor in charge. Uh, generally speaking, you may be right. In some cases, um, it will take more time to complete the surgery, but then it is not always the case. Take orthopedic uh, surgeries um, for the joint at the knee. Um, um, sometimes it will require more 
uh, time for conventional surgery than the minimally invasive uh, surgeries. Um, uh, I think probably the HA can uh, assist with this uh, question. And then for the case of uh, Jinmen Hospital, we've already asked um, the HA to look at the following. That is uh, to carry out a feasibility study on having a new uh, block for surgeries. Ms. Dr. Leung, we haven't really studied the difference in the time needed. As the Secretary said, in some cases it requires more time, in some cases not. But then the inpatient days will be reduced and then the recovery will be faster. So it will certainly benefit the patients. As to whether it will uh, affect the number of sessions available at the operating theaters, yes, there will be an impact. So. Um, at different hospitals, we're trying to see how we can enhance the capacity of the theatres and would like to raise the efficiency of the operating theatres. In the case of QEH, if the theatres are distributed um, in different corners of the hospital, it will also have an impact on the efficiency. Dr. Fernando Zhang, uh, I apologize. I uh, had to teach in the morning. The Secretary said in his speaking note that uh, we have new developments in hospitals and uh, we will uh, identify sites for construction of new hospitals. Uh, and uh, there might be a public private partnership scheme of construction of new hospitals. Chairman. I'm concerned that uh, the provision of medical and health services might gradually be privatized. Now, uh, the uh, medical uh, voucher scheme, health voucher scheme, uh, is now enhanced and the value is also increased. And there may be enhanced cooperation with the private sector. More and more members of the public are asked to uh, foot part of the bill to procure medical and health care services in the market. I'm worried that sooner or later, uh, for those who can afford it, you can have better services. If you don't have the means, well, the waiting time is longer. And even uh, the quality of service might be uh, not so good. So, Secretary, what are the principles when you further privatize medical and health care services, given that the HPS may be launched quite soon? So what are the principles you consider? Uh, your slogan is no one will be denied of appropriate medical and health care because of a lack of means. How can you ensure? that uh, this principle will be upheld as you further privatize medical and health care services. First, I have uh, to emphasize that the government has no intention or consideration to privatize medical and health care services. But we have to understand that we have a parallel approach with both the public and private sectors. If we uh, over all the medical and health care services for the whole community using public funds, I think this is not sustainable. So our long-term strategy is to use various means to balance the development of both the public and private sectors. And some services will be offered in a public-private partnership manner. But does that mean the doctors or patients must have to pay for the services they use that is not necessarily the case. For the HA, for uh, self-financed items and uh, in public private partnership scheme, now they will only apply to elective services. Uh, for instance, uh, some drugs or facilities offered by the HA 
may be provided in a more cost-effective manner. And then if patients want to go for an option with uh, more marginal benefits, they can go for they can pay for private in the private sector and for the elective uh, surgeries now if uh, patients are willing to pay then they can have uh, the service in the private sector however uh, we are going uh, to a launch for diabetes and hypertension patients a GOPC public private partnership program now, uh, the patients will be paying the same amount in the private sector as if they were uh, receiving the treatment in the public sector. Madam Chair Yunhan. Uh, referring uh, to the remarks made by the secretary, he said that uh, there should be a screening for colorectal cancer. I hope that statistics can be given. I think the whole government is evading the issue. I'm not referring to the secretary. In Hong Kong, the community is worried because of the increasing uh, prevalence of cancer and also air pollution and due to uh, the effect of uh, food. However, on uh, food policy, the government adopts a rather laid back approach. We still have agricultural land. The government should consider agricultural development because of the food issue. We have an aging population. How many percentage of our beds are being taken up by patients over 65 years old? So, and uh, we also want. Uh, uh, with a dental care voucher scheme and also Chinese medical uh, service and uh, also uh, neuro neurologist in uh, Hong Kong East. I know, I know your problem. You have problem with resources, but the government must tackle the problem. You cannot just adopt a piecemeal approach. All right, I can discuss with you various voucher schemes. I am asking you whether it is because you have a problem. I think you are going around in circles. Secretary, you might have worked very hard, but there are really problems. If you look from outside and consider the criticism of Hong Kong people, why are we so worried about our food safety? Why don't we have uh, uh, agricultural policy to tackle that problem? Secretary, well, I may not be able to address uh, the issues uh, one by one. Now, if you think that we're evading the question, then we won't have a proposed uh, review. If I wanted to evade a question, I would not uh, launch uh, this pilot colorectal cancer screening program. So uh, we have identified the problems. We are facing up to the problems, but honestly, we really have to do it step by step. We have to secure the resources before we can offer a full range of uh, services. Ms. Chen, I agree with your point on our inadequacy. The only point I disagree is the government's attitude. The government's attitude is to point out the problems, admit to the problems, and tackle the problems. But honestly speaking, because of uh, resource constraints, I cannot do or I cannot satisfy the aspirations of all members and the whole community overnight. But we have to do it step by step. If I do not uh, take the first step, I won't be able to uh, reach the destination. Uh, your time is up, Ms. Chen. I think the, mm, all the problems are boiled down to resources. Madam Anne Chen, thank you. In 2008, on the 24th of December, that's Christmas Eve, I went to the A and E department of Prince of Wales Hospital. That was six years ago, when I uh, saw uh, the situation, I was shocked. And then uh, I returned home and wrote this article, um, Purgatory. 
on earth. And then, six years have elapsed. I've got uh, uh, this inquiry from a member of the public. Uh, his mother uh, had a car accident. Uh, she's over 80 years old, and she was asked uh, to wait uh, for admission for further examination. And she waited for two nights. He never complained against anything in Hong Kong, but then he was, he really suffered and he wanted me to refer this issue to Dr. Ko to see to the problem. Dr. Ko, we understand that the administration has done a lot in, uh, the past couple of years. You've increased the number of, uh, medical student intake. You've introduced, uh, uh, non-local doctors to practice in Hong Kong. You have started a redevelopment of hospitals and you have opened new beds, but the problems are still not resolved. So can you set up a plan uh, with a timetable, with uh, targets to improve the situation? I'm sure if you have such a plan, everyone sitting here will support your initiative to improve our medical and health care system. Will you consider setting up such a timetable? Secretary, I admit that the provision of services in public hospitals needs improvement, and the waiting time is also very long. However, I've personally visited many hospitals. I've looked at uh, the uh, OPDs and awards, and I can see that we are really um, under great pressure because of the aging population. That is not something for the future, but it is already happening now. Inpatients are older, and uh, they're suffering from more serious problems. And our public hospitals have stretched the limits by adding beds in uh, wards and uh, in whatever space is available, and still we're not able to provide enough services to uh, meet all our targets. However, you want a quick fix? The um, imbalance of uh, service supplied and service demand because of the aging population. Well, we really need time for fam for hospital facilities. Well, we have plans to redevelop a QMH and Cornwall H. We do have t a timetable for these. And doctors' manpower in the past few years have increased the number of medical student intake, and by uh, 2018 19, we will have 400 doctors more per year. And uh, the uh, report on review of manpower demand it will only be available towards the end of this year. But by 2020, we can only see uh, some relief in uh, manpower. Uh, shortage of doctors uh, by 2020. Mr. Sinchonka, I'd like to follow up on uh, this question of enhancing health care services. Our population is aging faster than the um, speed of improvement in our public sector. The uh, Working Group on Long-Term uh, Fiscal Planning has published a report. The Secretary might have noted it, and that is when Hong Kong will face a structural deficit problem in the long term. And it's mentioned in the report that without any improvement in our health service quality, and when will we see that deficit, and also the scenario uh, if we see a 1% or 2% increase or improvement in health care services. A question for the Secretary. Uh, to cope with the service demand due to our aging population, uh, Secretary, do you think that we should improve our services by 1%, 2%, or a certain percent? in order to satisfy the demand. 
and so that we will not have a medical and health care cliff secretary. Uh, Mr. Sinai uh, get most of the points with the exception of the last one. According to the report, uh, if uh, we, the more we uh, improve our medical and health care services, the sooner will we see that fiscal deficit. So, in the long term, if we rely solely on our public sector to meet the demand, the uh, long-term sustainability is doubtful. Earlier, a member asked whether we're going to privatize our services, but I said categorically that we have we will not privatize our medical and health care services. Rather, we would like to uh, balance the development in both the public and private sectors within the financial affordability of the government will continue to support and honor our undertaking in the public sector. However, we also need alternatives such as public private sector partnership or cooperation and uh, we may also need the voluntary HPS so that our members or members of the public that uh, can afford it can um, then uh, purchase uh, private services so as to balance the uh, utilization of services in the public sector. Uh, golden 50. Uh, Mr. Sinai, formed by a former EXCO member, has said that uh, there should be five new hospitals. Would you agree with him? And uh, how can it be reflected? And when will it be reflected in the uh, financial planning? Well, I think my understanding is that uh, what he actually means is that uh, there should be more hospital beds, many more. As to whether there should be uh, sort of uh, translated into five new hospitals. It depends on the distribution of the hospital beds. But then certainly we need more hospital beds. Now our strategy is that we have to increase the number of beds both in the public sector as well as the private sector. For the private sector, in six to seven years' time, the capacity of the private sector will be increased by 30%. For the public sector, earlier on, we have already given a blueprint to the health services panel. In 20 years' time, we need to increase the number of public hospital beds uh, by a certain extent, but it may not necessarily be in the form of five new hospitals. In Kitek, it is going to be a a large hospital with 2,000 beds. And then we can also have expansion of existing hospitals. We have uh, uh, development in NT East. And then maybe within NT East, uh, we can have a new hospital. But personally speaking, maybe we can look at Northern, the North District. And maybe it's better to expand the North District Hospital. So let's not dwell on this specific number of new hospitals, but then for both the public as well as the private sectors, in the next 20, 30 years' time, we need to increase the number of hospital beds rather substantially. We've got four members on the list, uh, a number of for the second time, some for the third time. I'll try to give each uh, member uh, two minutes so as to uh, complete today's session. First of all, Fernando Zhang, um, I want to look at reply 24. For the elders, age 60 or above, if they go to the um, hospitals, they can take easy uh, access, transport service. For the disabled, they can use the rehab bus service. Both are run by the Hong Kong Society for Rehabilitation. But then for rehab bus service, it's under the um, Labor and Welfare uh, Bureau, while the easy access is under your bureau. Now, they ha have more demand than supply. Uh, every year, they have to turn away 10,000 or so 
uh, bookings. I want to know whether you can have a better coordination. Uh, I've been told by the Hong Society for Rehabilitation that it may so happen that we have got an elderly patient age 60 and then a disabled person age 60 or above. And both of them would like to go to the same hospital. And then the Hong Kong Society for Rehabilitation has to send the two patients on two separate vehicles. Bung Chu think that it is a bit ridiculous. So is it possible to coordinate between the rehab bus as well as the easy access transport service? Uh, so for PWDs and the elders, I hope you won't make such a uh, strict distinction between the two groups of clients. For Dr. Fernando Cheng's uh, recommendation to better utilize our resources, I think any ideas along that line can certainly be looked into. We can uh, take up the matter with the Labor and Welfare Bureau. Next, Dr. N. Zhang. I cannot agree with one of the points in your earlier reply. Um, Dr. Ko, you said that it would only be sometime after 2020 that we can get uh, more medical graduates. Uh, but then the graduates will be too um, inexperienced. I think manpower should be left to the last. I think currently we need more hardware. For the software, I think if you open up the market, even if you employ overseas uh, graduates, it will be better and you can do it sooner. Uh, if you insist on not opening up, then it means that the doctors themselves are creating the barriers and this is being done at the expense of the well-being of the uh, grassroots of the patients. I see it with my own eyes and I feel very sad. If you haven't got sufficient doctors, you can get them from overseas. Uh, once you can satisfy your demand, then you can stop employing the non-local doctors. That they can be employed on a contract um, uh, basis. Now, Dr. Cheng is referring to the importance of the hardware. I agree with you. Uh, we can be flexible with manpower, but not so with the hardware. If you haven't got the buildings, if you haven't got the facilities, even if you have the manpower to provide a service, you can't deliver the service. We have got uh, colleagues from the Financial Services uh, Bureau. Um, I can be frank with you. When we try to um, expand our hospitals, in fact, we are faced with a lot of problems. And uh, we need to assess the magnitude of the problem. I agree with Dr. N. Zheng. For the past 10 years or so, we haven't built any new hospitals. Now, in the past two years or three, uh, we felt for ourselves the impact of the aging of the population. So when you go to the hospital wards, you see that it is very crowded. You have got six beds or even eight or even ten beds being crowded into one ward. So for the long-term financial implications, I may not be able to give you the figures. But still, I can see that if I don't uh, promote um, the construction of new facilities, it will certainly mean that the Bureau uh, is not doing its job. Thank you. Next, Dr. Helena Wong, elderly healthcare vouchers. I'm glad to see that the value being enhanced to $2,000. My question is, I want to know whether the Bureau or the Department have got plans to promote the program so that more clinics will be joining the scheme. Recently, I went to a clinic together with an elder person. The clinic said no, they didn't provide the service because they were not in the uh, program. I asked them why and then they said that it's too troublesome. They were not interested in uh, the program because they had to um, um, click onto the website. So, uh, Secretary, have you found out why some clinics are not interested in joining the scheme? Is it possible to streamline the system requirements so that more um, uh, patients can make use of the vouchers? 
Secretary, Dr. Wong, uh, we have already improved the elderly health voucher scheme. The value has been increased from 1,000 to 50, uh it has been increased uh, to a total of $2,000. So it has enhanced the attractiveness of the scheme, both in terms of the practitioners as well as the patients. Um, but I don't think it will be 100% utilization. On the one hand, we need more publicity so that people know they can use the uh, vouchers. Secondly, we cannot rule out the possibility that some patients uh, find that they have got their own resources and they may not want to make use of the public resources. And then thirdly, in the past, the total value of the voucher uh, uh, vouchers was smaller, and so it w there was less incentives. And then, um, of course, uh, if some medical practitioners are not interested in having computer systems, and since we mandate the use of computer systems, they may not be interested to join the program. Uh, we're going to step up our publicity, and I hope that with the enhancement of the program, I'm sure more and more practitioners will be happy to join. Yes, uh, many people are already making use of computers, but please streamline the um, procedures involved. We'll try our best. Emily Lau, a question about dental care. It is said that there will be some money available for elders at the residential care homes and elders using the daycare centers to have outreach servers. Just now the secretary has said that it is impossible to provide dental care for the entire population. And that's why we have got 100,000 or so elders who have lost all their teeth. So secretary, can you confirm that when compared with other places, we are in the same position. That is, um, a society would not be providing comprehensive dental care to the uh, entire population, or we, are we the odd man out where we are being too misery? Uh, we haven't got uh, comprehensive dental care, but we have got specific and targeted uh, dental care, like uh, young children or elders who, in their younger days, did not have uh, things like school um, uh, dental uh, care. So uh, we'll be looking beyond the residential care homes through the community care program. We are also going to improve uh, the services so that elders in the community who have the need will also be taken care of. Mr. Chairman, my question was um, whether other places also didn't have comprehensive dental care. I won't say that all of them, but in many countries, it is not possible to uh, have a territory-wide uh, dental care program being funded by public money. But then there is a strong demand. We have got over 100,000 elders who have lost all their teeth. We would like to target at those who have the need. Will the 100,000 elders uh, get your service? Well, it's a matter of capacity. It's easier to provide a service for those residing at the residential homes. NGOs have already organized teams uh, to, to visit the elders. Usually, we need to count on the uh, NGOs to take the elders to go to a dental clinic to receive the service. So in terms of operation, it is rather complicated. So if an elder can take can be taken to a clinic, then uh, he will get the service. Then I will try my best to take the elders to the clinics. Currently, the threshold is lot higher. Um, what sort of threshold are you talking about? The elders have already lost all their teeth. Uh, for the details, I can explain them to you later on. We have already overrun, and on this note, uh, I would like to um, close this session, and then we'll come back at 2.30.